What's up, family and friends? Good afternoon and welcome to the Woke Nation. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well and uh, having fun wherever you are living your life. It was born in here, so I have to take off my clothes and uh, run around blazing, burning, hot summer day. I hope you're having fun wherever you are living your life. And um, I want to share with us very important and if you notice yesterday i did not do any life i did not come do any life because something that happened to me yesterday i never uh, except maybe like when i was locked up or maybe um, admitted in a hospital or clinic i never have such day before so and i hope that's the last one because it was for my own good all right so i titled this if God is with them, if God is with them, it's not a question. I did not say, is God with them? No. Already you know that I, uh, there is no God and no God is with anyone. Anyone that tell you God is with them are suffering from delusion or hallucination. They love, they practice what is called illusion. So they don't know what they are saying. They don't know what they are doing. They are just saying what they have been trained, that is converted, conditioned, programmed to say. And uh, I don't blame them until they hear from me. So when they hear from me and continue in their illusion, they are stupid, right? So if you hear the truth, know the truth, fear the truth, see the truth, and still believe in the lie, you are stupid, certified one. So, uh, uh, this thing I want to share is based actually what I experienced yesterday. On Friday night from work, I went, I picked my daughter up to be with me so that early in the morning we will go to Motoveco for her to get her driver's license. Because last Monday I went to, uh, I, I, took, I took her to, Trenton because I, I already know that uh, new work will be jam packed. So I drove 50 minutes to Trenton from West Orange to Trenton. Getting there, they say no. I met somebody that have been there. He say he has been there since 7:30, and this time now it's like 12:30, and these people are no longer receiving any new people coming in. And you know the COVID-19 really changed many things. Where you used to walk in before and do your business and go, no, you stay outside. And imagine this hot sun. Yesterday was over 90 degrees and we were standing under the sun. People, man, at least I have chair in my car. I have umbrella, all that. You know, and you see people, some people slept there. Some people were hanging. So because I'm off yesterday and today, I say, let me take her to Moto Vehicle. Uh, yesterday so i pick her up 4 a.m we wake up we wake up to get ready to go we thought we are early you know? okay we're going to go early because my daughter wanted to be like six o'clock i said no we have to go early because they say that uh line will be too much so we went to win not to walk though we we drive by new walk to find i see line i said no there is line already here at this time that's after four o'clock in the morning then we drove to when when getting to the when longer line we see longer line than in new york i said anyway okay let, we are here already let's stay here so we, we get there almost five o'clock so let me say 5 a.m so we get there but what i wanted to get there, that's why i said if god is with them now she's my daughter i care about her so much and that's why i take out time to do because i already giving her the car she have her own car to drive but she need to get her license because she already passed both the routine and the, and the road test then we stood we stood waiting for the time you know boom 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 they have to open at eight but we are already there at five so i met another guy that saying he has been there since two o'clock and he's not in the beginning he's somewhere far then the pers people at the door has been there so early. We meet also a, a, a lady, uh, a young girl, I think she's 18 or 17, with, um, with her family member. He said they have been there since 12 a.m. Okay, so we waited. Then 8, 
like, up, up, I think either 8.15 or 8.30, they open the door. They, they, they walk around with the card, maybe the amount of card they're supposed to take care of that day. So they were asking like the new people that want to get the new license, people that want to renew, and the um, people that want to do like state ID. State ID, you can walk in, they say it's easy. So they make that three line. The people that come that came for registration or, or, or title or that they say no they are not accepting it so those people despite them coming early they have to leave and that black guy i may say yeah it happened to him he was coming for for his um uh, uh cdl license so he said he came one time around two o'clock and he spent time when these people wake up open they say no they're not accepting the such people that day he has to go back home so uh when he get to her, my daughter's turn she entered then i went back to the car waiting for her she came out you know she get her license then we decided to drive home uh she will drive home after going through all that so she want to take the car home because i've been with the two cars so he has to take the car home so I just say, okay, let me test her to see if she can, like when she get home, she, she says she will use GPS, she will not use highway, she will use only the locals. So okay, I said, okay, when you get home, I want you to show me how you can park the car in the street. Because you cannot, yeah, you can drive, but you're supposed to know how to park everything, especially when you park in the street. You cannot come in the middle of the street and park your car and leave police can give you a ticket or they may tow the car if they call you didn't respond then um she tried to show me i found that she cannot park it good it happened to every new driver you know there is not it's not a new thing so because they're still like afraid i don't want to hit the curb or that so i was a little bit annoyed you know do the you know that's how i sound do this do it this way do it this way she went and, tried, and looking at her face, I know, man. <laughs> she, she's like somebody in the hot seat. So I say, you know what? You're not taking the car because I don't want you to go. You can't park the car or all that. So I asked her to enter the car. I start taking her home. I get to a spot. I say, let me go back home. Then I, I take her back to my house. I say, you know what, you are going to follow me with this car, I'll be driving, you'll be following me. Forget about any sign, whether they say stop. If I make turn, you follow me, make turn. So just follow me. I am the one now leading you. Forget any sign in the road, just listen to me. You see, father and child relationship, you should understand that. Remember the topic, if God is with them. Now I was with my daughter. All that yesterday it doesn't matter what i spend my time my money or whatever no i was doing it for my daughter because i care about her get that if god is with this thesis if god is with these people that say there is god god has done this or god can do this if god is with them think along with me i'm coming so um she followed me we drove like when i come to red light if i see the light about to change i just stop for her to follow me because i don't want to pass she's not that expert already to follow me so you no know, maybe somebody with we hit her so when we get to her place i ask her okay go in your place park she, she uh, i found that she didn't make it good right so i bring her out in the street begin to talk to her again tell her no when you are going focus where you are going i know what was happening to her because i've been in her shoe before even though even at this time i still make mistake as a driver sometimes because sometimes even to park you may be thinking oh i get it but you didn't i say sometimes i still come out to check how far i am from the curve and i don't want it like my new car i don't want the curve to scratch the wheel or the, the alloy wheel rim so i still do all that i said just take your time be patient as a woman too so you are better you will know better than me and all that i want you to be better and all that then 
she listened she entered the car again and they drove right very nicely and go and pack it inside that place then she come down again i start talking to her telling her what to do uh, this blah blah when i finish talking to her i'm about to go I say another thing start watching some clips on youtube you know on learn from people online like i you when i came to america i used to watch online to see how they drive like um, in um, car race and all that and when i enter if somebody giving me a ride i look at them see how they drive so those things help me i learn from people right so and there are other things when you get when you get used to drive then you can add some other things and do your thing that's it so i left but i left i was still restless when i think about her and the car because the car is not like those small car is infinity i thought five so it's big it's a luxurious car the wheel is not like um, easy to move like all these uh, new cars now so um i i was worried about her every time i think about her driving that car I was what i said i don't want my daughter to have accident i don't want her to hit anyone else. anyone hit her right so i was worried and i said you know what today i will drive to that place and i will tell her to move to to bring the car out because where they live you know for you to go in you know when you go in it will even touch the bottom of your car because it's a little bit high so I tell her, like, when you're coming out, it's a street, you see car come, going to and fro. So you have to come in out slowly, very slow, take your time. You make a mistake, you go back and start, start again. I was saying, okay, we do that. Maybe after I finish in the park, I will drive down to that place to um, see how she will come out. Because she will be taking the car to walk and maybe to shop and also all that. So before I come to this park, I call, before I came, I call her. I say, "What's up?" He's, I say, "Where are you?" He say, "I'm in the church." <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's another point altogether. So I say, "With my mom." So you know, she's with her mom. So she thinks, she says, "Let's go, let's drive." You're going to. I'm no longer going with Uber. You're going to. You can drive. Let's go. Okay. So I was like, "You went with the car?" She said, "Yes." I say how I say yeah. She said those things I tell her yesterday. That's how she come. I say it was easier to even come out from that place than going in. I was in my say wow wow because I was worried that she cannot bring that car out to go anywhere. So I was like I will go bring it out, take you know try to um, watch her again, drive and make sure she know what she's doing. Boom. I found out, okay, she already driven to church. She said, okay, when she get back home, she will call me. See, that's what I experienced yesterday to today. So I feel that relief when she says she took the car to the church. So this is the point I want to take, points I want to take from this. I spent time to be with my daughter for her to get her driver's license, not my driver's license. She's 18, an adult she can do it without me she's not driving i am driving right so up uh, uber can take her there to and fro but no i decided to take her it, i deny myself quality sleep i spend my own time for her all right now think about that you that believe in god those of you that believe in god you that is still arguing about the power of your God, your God loving you and care about you. If God care about you, where is God in your time of need? Where is that God helping you out, spending time with you to make sure all things are working together for good as they wrote in the book? He said, if God be for you, no one can be against you. But where was that God or where is that God when the government, the police, the army, the insurgents, the terrorists, all these people, terrorizing people all over the world came after you or after your people? Where was God? When people bomb church, when people attack worshippers, where was God? Was God with them or God not with them? Was God watching them slaughtered? Was God watching them robbed? Was God watching them die? Where was God? Some of you will argue, it is the will of God. 
it is that if dying anyhow is the will of god then why are you praying for long life why are you praying against accident why are you praying against death why are you seeking for treatment when you are sick why are you needing doctor why do you build hospital if you believe dying is god's will just as those that believe there is life after death so why are you worried about death why are you not going to war for something to uh, for you to be killed why are you scared was god or is god with you in your place of work why you are working under somebody who is maltreating you why you are working as slave under somebody is god with you if god is with you is does it make sense that you are working under somebody and god is greater than that person god is richer than that person god is stronger than that person and God is watching you maltreated. God is watching you controlled. God is watching you living in bondage. You know how you cry. You know how you're scared to death losing that job. You know how you're scared to death being in trouble. Was God with you then? And is God with you now? Think. You said, um, as some of you said, Oh no, you know, you are suffering because you disobey God. Uh, you know, it's God's punishment. Where was God before you disobey? him i was with my daughter yesterday she made those mistakes right if it were when i was a christian i would have beat her up or maybe if i'm in in, in africa and i would have done that you know you know normal way parents treat their children right so where I, I was trying to correct him uh, correct her i don't want her to make a mistake so but you believe that god used suffering use hardship to correct you no I should. I, I, I didn't use any hardship to correct my daughter. No, I was using my voice, you know, trying. And uh, sometimes I will enter there and show her this is how you do it. You control this car. This car cannot hear what you are thinking. This car cannot hear what you are saying. You control it. That's how. That's why you have the wheel. And today she shares some. She shares some good thing about how she placed her hand and how it helped. Ha. You see, because she was, she's my daughter and I am her father and I was there for her, worried about her. Remember, I like, I, I purposely use that word, worried, because I don't, I am not her. I know myself. I'm not worried about myself driving. I only worried about her getting accident, hitting someone else. That's what I was worried. I don't want her to get hurt and because i am worried about her i did not ignore her and wait for her to make mistake i have to call her again to find out how you know maybe if i will come but she, i found out that she learned from what i say and she's doing her own thing handling her own business what if, if she come and tell me something bad happened what will i do i still instruct her not threatening her that i will take the car from her i will punish her for not doing what i want as as i as i said no i will not do that because i am she's my daughter i am his uh, father why should i treat her like that when i know that i used to be like her when i was a new driver i know my first car in america was lexus man you need to see the body of that car I was scratching it, even coming out from where I was living. Eh, I want to know <laughs> the back will scratch. All that, I was hitting other cars and all that. So I didn't want her to make that mistake. Another point, if God is with you, if God is your father, right? Wh wh why can't God help you, especially in that situation? You're supposed to know better. I said, I have uh, been in her shoe before. So God who created you is supposed to know better. God is supposed to know what will happen in the future. They said that he knew the end from the beginning. So God is supposed to know whether you will have accident or not. So he's supposed to prevent it from happening because it will hurt you, not him. Do you hear what I said? You are good, you are, you are, you are evil. According to the Bible, it said it does not affect God. It have only affect you and your fellow human being. You are being good, you are being bad. It only affects your fellow, so it cannot affect God. Now, my daughter having an accident cannot affect me personally. 
although the car is registered in my name, the insurance in my name, but she is the driver and she have, the only thing it will affect, it may affect my insurance, but not me. Get that? I am not the one in accident. So that's how I am with my daughter. How about you and the God? If you still have someone, maybe do, like you, the woke nations, you still have somebody arguing with, uh, with you about God. You can add that person here or send this to that person. Let that person tell you where was God when they have that mistake or that sin they commit or that offense that warrant them to be suffering, that justify their suffering, that justify their sickness, that justify their disease, that justify their failure. They, they, you see, they will not blame God. They always blame themselves. They say it's because of the sin they committed. It's because of their own mistake. It's because of their own error. But the question is this. How about you are God? You are God who's supposed to know better than you. Who's supposed to know that you will sin or that you will make a mistake or you will fail? He has the power, right? They say that with him, all things are possible. So if God is with you, why is it not possible for him to prevent you from sinning? Why is it not possible for him to pre prevent you from getting sick? Why is, it, why is it not possible for him to pr protect you from diseases, from virus, from evil, from accident, from attack, from unexpected? Why not? Think about it if god is with you if god is for you if god is in you what is the work of god in reality so long your life is consigned zero zero god cannot god has not done do anything for you in reality anyone anyone regardless their position in life regardless their, their 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 title in life that say or claim that god has done so so thing that person is lying investigate that person the same thing goes when you hear testimonies of people investigate it don't believe what they said without investigation yes you believe then investigate if you believe, they say you will see what you believe. So it's not what you should see after death. It's not what you should see many years. Just like the argument where I show them that God is a liar according to their book. Because in Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, God specifically said, the day, the day, not some day not another day, not maybe after one year, 1,000 years. He said, the day you eat of this tree, the day, the day, is a particular day. Particular day, say, the day you eat of this tree, you will surely die, not you will spiritually die, not you will, you will die someday. No, you will say you will surely. It is guaranteed. It is sealed, it is signed and delivered you will surely die then in chapter 3 of the same genesis 1 to 11 the day they finally ate of that fruit or that tree they did not die do you know why they did not die because god lied the serpent which represents the wise one the wise one told man adam and eve or told the woman the woman he said god knows the truth that the day you eat of this tree if you eat the eye your eyes will open you will not die death is an illusion you don't die it is your eyes that will open you will begin to know as god he said for god knows the day you eat you will become like god knowing what is good and evil and that's what knowledge still do today yet you see some people arguing with that that's the point i want to show you there they still argue no god meant spiritual death 
I made that post and I hear some silly things. Believers are coming up defending God in the Bible. So that one say no, it's a spiritual death. I say that's your interpretation, but it need no interpretation. If the Bible is the word of God, it don't need anyone's interpretation. You don't, you don't need anyone to interpret the word of your father to you. It is plain to you. Your father say, go to the farm and bring wood. You are waiting for your brother to come and interpret you. My father did not mean wood. He meant a uh, hoe. That's what it, no, it's wood. You go there and get wood. If you go there and get hoe, you say, because your father tell you, I mean, your brother tell you, God really mean hoe. Oh, because hoe have a wood. No, he say wood, not hoe. Okay? So, they make that uh, argument. No, it means spiritual death. There's no such thing as spiritual death. And God never says spiritual death there. The place you begin to see spiritual death is in the New Testament. After they find out people have been questioning all the bullshit, all the foolishness in the Old Testament, now they created the New Testament to say this is the better one. When you have new, it means the old one is obsolete. It means it's useless. It does not work. That's why you have new one. You get that? All right. So, then somebody else say, no, Adam, Adam did not live up to 1,000 years because to the Lord, a day is 1,000 years. You see? And that person is quoting from New Testament, book, book of Peter. I say, I see how these people reason. I say, okay, 1,000 years. Right? <laughs> okay, what date was Adam created that make you believe Adam did not live up, or live up to 1,000 years? They, they just tell you Adam lived so, so years. Did they tell you the day Adam was created? Nobody know. Because it's a fairy tale. Nobody can tell you Adam's birthday. Adam has no birthday. Adam had no birthday. So how can you tell me Adam lived 900 and something years? How can you tell me Adam lived 300 and something years? You don't know the day he was created. There's no day. Just like those that are talking about the creation of the heaven and earth using the Bible. The, in the Bible, there's no date there also. So what shit are you talking about? <laughs> so you see the, 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 um, the stuff, they begin to make up. Then another excuse it takes make there. He said, no, you know, Jesus said, he quote that place in Luke chapter 9, which is one of my favorite places to debunk their lies. He said that Jesus said, you remember what Jesus said to the young man? He said, let the dead bury the dead. So Jesus was talking to people, the dead bury the dead. I said, see, something that happened in the Genesis, now you are finding the answer and look <laughs> i say god that's crap death in the old testament is dead yesterday today and tomorrow you will surely die it's not remember also when you tell hezekiah may put your family in order because you will die bible said jeremiah cried then god added 15 years to him you see God have to change it, but God never changed that you will surely die. He did not say it is. it means 1,000 years. He did not say it means spiritual death. No. So it is believers who believe in this junk written in the book that are defending it with another junk, with another lie. He said, no, the dead should bury the dead. Jesus was like, no. Who are the dead? In Luke chapter 9, it has nothing to do with you will surely die in... Genesis chapter 2. But you see, they try to defend the lie in the Old Testament with the bullshit written or lie written in the New Testament. It cannot sell among people like me. You, it, it is now. The, the Jesus said to the guy, let the dead bury the dead. So let the people that are with the dead bury the dead. They are there. You are here with me. Why are you worried about they are there? Why are you saying, let me go and bury my father? There are people there that are supposed to bury them. Bury him. Just as I'm living in America, you tell me my father died. My father is in Nigeria. He dies. You say you are waiting for me to come before you bury. No. He dies. You confirm he, he's dead. You don't put him in the mortuary. Open the ground and throw the body in there. That's the only thing you're supposed to do for the dead. Not spending money, languishing your money, saying you are doing one stupid barrier or not. That's what that, it is common sense because this thing are driving people crazy. People that claim God is with them are fighting to interpret the word of God using another thing written by somebody 
and that God is with them. If God is with you, you don't need any book to tell you about God. If God is with you, you don't need anyone to interpret anything called word of God for you or to you. That God supposed to teach you. Isaiah 53, 13. He said, for he with all his children will be taught by him. Even Jesus quoted that. And also in the book of Hebrew, it was quoted. If God is with you, why are you needing anyone to teach you? Why are you needing anyone to lead you? Why are you needing anyone to guide you? Why are you needing anyone to help you? Let God help you. Let God teach you. Let God lead you. Let God protect you. If God is with you. God is not with you. That's why you are suffering. God is not with you. That's why you are looking for somebody to give you your monthly salary. That's why you're looking for somebody to give you money to pay your rent. That's why you are crying in prayers because God is not with you. If God is with you, you imagine my daughter was with me yesterday. I fed her also. I didn't, she have her own money, but I, when she, whenever she's with me, I spend on her, not her spending. I know she have money. Think about it. Because I was with her, I took care of her. If God is with you, why not God taking care of you? They tell you that this God is able to supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. They tell you that this God fed the people of Israel in the wilderness with manna from heaven. They tell you that this God caused water to come out of rock so that his people can drink in the wilderness. They tell you that this God fed the multitude with meat, with fish, with, with, with bread. They tell you that this God take care of prophet Elijah by the brooks, bed, sending bed with food prepared by who the prophet didn't know to take care of him. So why is he not real with you? You are the one that still have to wake up, go there, suffer, walk your ass off to make money, and you come back saying it is the Lord's doing. If God is with you, why are you still living like those who God is not with? If God is with you, why are you living even below those who God is not with? God is not with me. God is not with Chinese people. God is not with Japanese people. But you Africans who carry God in your head, because you are, Africans are the ones that created God. Where is God in your present situation? See how you are suffering. See how white men are still controlling you. And you still claiming that God is with you. Today is Sunday. Many of you already wasted your time and your life in churches. Many of you are still there right now. And many of you will be there later. Wasting your time and your life in the name of God. God that cannot show up to help you in your time of need. Think, if God is with you, why are you still suffering? You say God is testing you. Oh, boy. Testing you with evil. James chapter 1, verse 13, if I stay correct. He said, when you are tested, that's when you are tempted, do not say you are tempted of God because God does not tempt anyone with evil. But you have that, that pastor that lost his mother-in-law, his wife, and his children in the fire in his house. And he said it is God testing his faith. God testing your faith with suffering. God testing your faith with sickness. God testing your faith with disease. God testing your faith with, with, your faith with coronavirus. God testing your faith with abandonment. God testing your faith with frustration. And you're telling me God is testing your faith. It is time you wake up and stop being silly. Stop being stupid by faith. All right. Yeah. Now, another one is this. Still talking about myself and my daughter, right? Now, my daughter didn't know what I was thinking about her. Right? And the one that planned, I said, I will go to see how she will come out because I care, I want her to know what she's doing. And you say you have God, God is with you. You say you know the plan, 
God is saying he knows the plan he has for you. His plan of good and not of evil to give you a, 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 a future that has a better life. Okay. God is almighty. I am not almighty. I thought about my daughter and I was worried that, in other words, I care so much that I don't want her to get hurt directly or indirectly. Now, I was planning to go to her, to help her, to watch her, to make sure she did the right thing. And you say God is with you. Almighty God, he says he's watching over you. He says everything about you concerns her, that concerns him. Then where is God thinking about you? If God has a plan for you, why are you the one praying to God, telling him to reveal anything to you? Why can't that God show up? At least call you. I have to call my daughter because I cannot just enter my car and start going to her. I have to call her, telling her I'm coming. Why can't God do better for you? He knew better than me, according to your book. He is stronger than me, according to your book. But he cannot do a thing. He cannot try 0.1% of what I do. He is almighty. Yes, I am stronger than him. He is all-knowing, yet I am wiser than him. You say he's everywhere, yet he's nowhere. He's, he's not here right now. He cannot show up. Yet you keep believing this God and arguing. You know, he cares about me. He plan No, you are just quoting what was written in the book to control you. They wrote those things for you to believe. So in believing, you remain easy to control. But when you know, when you have knowledge of truth, you know what you are doing, you will not be controlled by anyone. If my daughter knows how to drive, I don't need to go and control her. And that's what I just confirmed. She says she drove to church. Do I have, still have to go to show her how to come out? No. Oh, man. Come on. Let's think, my people, and stop being silly by faith. It is time you think and use your brain. You cannot use your brain and faith. Faith will kill your brain. Faith suspend your brain from walking. That time you begin to put on your clothes to go to church, you have crucified your brain. You have suspended your brain. You don't care to think. All you care to is to be there and do what you are commanded to do. You are not living your life. You are living by faith. And faith is fake. If God is with you, why is he not coming to help you? At least call you, not you calling him. He said, call on me. I would No, I didn't ask my daughter to call me. No. I am the one that made that decision. I will call her because I saw what happened yesterday. And if God can see what will happen to you in future, why can't he call you without you praying, without you interceding, without you fasting, without you crying and tell you this thing will happen? You say, yeah, he spoke, but you didn't listen or you didn't understand. And that's another silly excuse. He has the power to make you understand. He has the power to make you hear. They wrote in your book, they said, God is the one that gives hearing ears. If God gives hearing ears, why can't he give you the ear to hear his voice? Why do you need someone to teach you how to know the will of God? Why do you need someone to teach you how to know the voice of God? Why do you need someone to teach you how to know the word of God? Think. Think, you are better than what you believe. You believe what you don't know. But when you know yourself, you will see that you are better than whatever you believe. Whether in Christianity, in, Christian, in, 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 in Judaism or Islam, you are better than that which you believe. 
You say you believe in God. You are better than that God. You say you believe in Jehovah. You are better than that Jehovah. You say you believe in Yahweh. You are better than Yah Yah that Yahweh. You say you believe in Allah. You are better than that Allah. You say you believe in Jesus. You are better than that Jesus. Your life is evidence of what I just said. You can get up and dress yourself. God cannot do that. God can not do anything for you or to you, but you can because you are real. You exist. You don't need any God to be with you. You need to be you. That's what you need. Be you. You see how it goes? Because they will tell you, he got the whole world in his hand. It's a lie. He got no word in his hand. He got nothing in his hand. He cannot do anything. He cannot move anything. You say by faith, faith moves mountain. Faith in God moves mountain. It's a lie. You only quoting what is written in the book. He said, have faith in God. That is Mark chapter 11, 22, right? From verse 20, he said, have faith in God. Then what comes next? He said, for if you have faith, he said, you can say to this mountain, be you move, and you move. It is a lie. No one can do that. No faith can move any mountain. It is you that will move that mountain. Let's say, ordinary this. This. God cannot move it. If you believe in God and you are listening, can God move this? You can, because you exist, you are real. That thing exists, that thing is real, you can move it. But you keep believing the lie they tell you. But look at the world. No, this world, it is people that control it. You see how government control people. You see the lockdown because of the coronavirus. No God will stop it. And no God can stop it. We are waiting for scientists to develop vaccine. Who is waiting upon the Lord for coronavirus? No person. But we have been indoctrinated, brainwashed, programmed, conditioned, to believe that there's an entity that created this world and controlling this world while we are in misery, suffering. How can you, a black person, after knowing the history of your people, how white people enslaved us, you still believe there is God somewhere that care about us? Where was this God? Where was this Jesus? When our people were enslaved and they still uh, doing, doing worse to us. You're supposed to wake up, start using your brain. That your parents taught you that doesn't mean you must live that way. That I even taught you that doesn't mean you must live that way. You have your own mind. Find out your own nature, how things work for you, and let it work for you. You don't need anyone to be in you. You don't need anyone to be above you. You don't, need to, you don't need anyone to be beneath you. All you need is to be you. Live your life. Then when you need help, you ask your fellow human being for help. Not asking for imaginary being you have not seen because somebody taught you that he exists somewhere which they cannot prove. I, 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 I came here running. The sun was so, when I say heat, you know, you know, like uh, the heat in Africa. And in America here, yeah, their, their heat is not light, like that of Africa, I mean the air. So the air, the humid was, so I was running, 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 man. I said, do you think, uh, uh, can I make this thing? I said, I must try to make it. <laughs> I made it, but I felt so exhausted. I felt that I, I, I need to drink water. I didn't come with water because I drink in the house before coming here. I always go back to drink. So, but these Spanish people are throwing party there, so they, they come with the cooler water inside, drink inside. I say, man, no, I'm not going back home. I haven't finished. Let me go ask them for water. I will not say, no, I'm not going as big as I am going to bake them water. I need it. What well, I need it, I need, then I have to ask somebody. I, I saw they have water there. I went there. I said, please give me water. I said, what? I said, I need aqua. They are Spanish people, aqua. He just give me one bottle. I drink some, I pour some on, my, on, my, on myself and sat down and I felt good. I did not pray as I used to pray when I was a Christian. Lord, give me strength. 
Lord, make me, help me make it through. I don't want to go beg those people. I know you are my God. Keep me until I get to my house. No. Because I already planned that I will speak here in this park today online. So for me to go back home means I will not do that. I'm exhausted because I need water. But here is water. People, I don't know them. They are Spanish, throwing party. I went there and asked them. They give to me. Who always give you in your time of need? Tell yourself the truth. There is no God that has given you anything in your time of need. Anyone that said that God provided for them or provides for them, that person is a certified liar. In other words, that person don't know he or she is liar. That was my alarm. I'm not going to work. It's 2, uh, 2 p.m. It's this time I'm supposed to get up and begin to get ready to work. So understand, uh, this person want to come in. Let me see if, if he can come in and see what he want to he say, approve, okay. You can say something you want to say, let me hear. All right. So you're supposed to consider your ways. As I said last time, consider your ways and make right decision. The request, the guest declined, good. Now, when you consider your ways, one of the things you should ask yourself, according to Job chapter 35, verse 10, you say, where is this my God? Where is God my maker? The one that gives song in the night. So why I am not having song in the night? Why I am not having relief in pain? Why am I not having food in, hung in hunger? Why I am not having protection? in sickness, in disease, in, in problems. Why am I not having those things they say God can supply? This is the question you must ask yourself and answer it. It is that simple. You have the power. Word is not in the hand of any God. Yo, what's up? Yeah, cool, brother. You're a senior man. I don't speak Ghana. I don't know what you just said. Akwaba. <laughs> Akwaba. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I follow you. I follow you anytime, everywhere you go. And we are in one mission, one vision for Africa to wake up. And we really love what you are doing. We have the same thing in Ghana here. See, uh, we want Christians and religious people to understand that Religion is a mental, a mental problem. Religion has destroyed the brain, the thinking, and the future of we, the black people. Uh, my brother, let me, let, me, let me say something here. According to religion and Christianity, they tell you or they told us we should give our life to Christ. My brother, how can a living creature give his life to a dead man? How can a living man like you, you and me will give our life to a dead white man in the name of religion? Oh. In the name of religion, black people are comfortable to be sheep and dogs. According to uh, uh, John chapter 10 verse 11, he said, uh, we are sheep. Why am I being a sheep? Why? Oh man, that call was coming in, and uh, at the network. This, this, this is the time. This is the time Africa need to wake up. Wake up with our senses, our brain. Then yeah. we should get up. We should get out from Christianity and Islam. It's the way of slavery. Please, this is the time. This is the time we need to wake up. This is the time. The Bible, the Quran, everything was invented just to control Africa. John chapter 10, verse 10. Thief, more than the white man. The white man came to Africa, stole us, killed us, destroyed our forefathers. Finally, they destroyed the generation and the next generation coming. I won't talk much. I won't speak much. I will go away for someone to, to come. But... Uh, we are following you. 
And we are never stopping what we are doing. Mm. We are never stopping. All right, thank you, my my brother from Ghana. So I go get once again. So right, we are waking up. Uh, let me say three years ago. Yeah, let me go or two years ago. By this time, 2018, I was not saying what I'm saying about God or about religion, right? I was still a, a Christian, you know, as normal way, you know, people do things as Christian. But we have to tell ourselves the truth. We, that's why we're supposed to consider our ways, especially you that is still having that fear of God or fear of cause or fear of uh, wrath of God, or fear of judgment day. Those things does not exist. People in heaven does not exist. People in hellfire does not exist. There is no God anywhere that exists that is watching anything or that can do anything. If there is any God that exists, it is you. If you want to see the true living God, just look into the mirror. You see that God looking at you. And that God can speak. That God can think. That God can act. That God can move. That's what I'm saying. Going back to the example of myself and my daughter. I was there because she's my daughter. And I make sure she, she, I mean, she did the right thing. And I was committed to it because she's my daughter. There's something else that even happened yesterday because she was telling me that somebody called her. Somebody I know very well called her and was talking about what she wants to study and all that. So, and the person said that I'm the one that sent him to talk to her. I said, and she said that even when the person said that, he says it doesn't make sense, you know? So she was there in my car. Then I have to call the person. It's in the car, so the speaker is on. So I begin, I asked the person, the began, began, I said, did I ask you any time to speak to my daughter? My daughter did not talk. I was just talking to the person, but she was hearing both of us. I said, no, you don't do that. When it comes to my family, no other man should come there. I don't care. And that, any woman I want to marry, that is the first thing I must tell that woman. Listen, it is between me and you. Don't tell me somebody else say, no. This marriage, and any day you say that, that will mark the end, the beginning of the end of that marriage. It will end. And it happened. That's one of the reasons I divorced my first wife. Yes. Because people will think you are just talking. You are just, no. I'm a man that practice what he preach. I don't just speak for speaking sake. That's why when I speak it, you think I am crazy. Then when you don't do as we agree, then you will know whether I am crazy or not. I will do what I say. And I don't care what any other person will say because my conscience is clear. I talk to you as, a, as an adult, as a person. So you have no excuse telling me somebody else said. So, and I purposely called that person to show my daughter I'm serious about that. I said, no, this is my family. I cannot pick up my phone to call your own children. So you don't call my own children. If I want to talk to your own children, you have to give me that permission. If I didn't give you permi permission, you don't talk to my child. But you see, some of us do that. Some people do that. I said, that's how they bring trouble in families. Because my daughter said something when she was saying that what that man said. She said, oh, even my parents don't, don't uh, believe, uh, don't support what she's uh, uh, doing. I said, that's another thing that gave me upset. You don't say that nonsense. I called you and sat you down and asked you what you want to do. You say that you want to do psychology. Then I say you will do it to the end. In other words, until you get your doctorate. That's it. And I am committed to that. It will take you 10 years. I am committed until you get it. So why are you even entertaining anything, any thought that, it tell, that tell you that I don't really support? It's because of what that man did. That man saw that evil seed, but I uprooted it yesterday. 
He sold, he said, I meant well. No, you don't. It's my family. I don't, I never call you. Thou, Gilead, you have father and mother. You, they, he, she don't need you to come telling him, telling her any bullshit. Live your own life. Live in your own family. Stop worrying another people's, I um, mean, troubling people with your silly belief. Uh, how, how people are supposed to live to gain anything in life. You see, because I am there. She's my daughter. She's my family. I don't need any other man to come and tell her anything. I can talk to her. Then she's ready. She's free to make her own choice. But the man didn't go to her. So, okay, let me congratulate her for her graduation. And let's just discuss something. The same nonsense you talk with me. And I tell you, don't worry about that. We are good. You still call my daughter to talk the same bullshit. And my daughter also reason like me somehow. She said, yeah, it doesn't make sense. I said, yeah, but you're supposed to have told me that yesterday. He called you before you thinking that, oh, I don't even support. No, I support what you are doing. If I don't support it, I will tell you, no, don't do that. If you are doing that, I will not contribute anything. I never say that. I am committed for that. I've been, I've been making sure you get what you're supposed to get and do what you're supposed to do. So that's our people. We let, I, I say that, until our people know that religion is at the root of their problem, they will never solve their problem. Some of them think it's money. It's not. Some of them think it is a relationship with certain. No, it's not. It's religion. Look at those families that are having problems, especially among Africans. The, the root cause of the problem is religious belief. Look at our politicians. Look at our everything. Religious belief is the ass. The onike or onike they used to cut down anything that makes us a people, anything that makes us a great people. They use religion to cut it. And you still see some of us encouraging religion or religious people. No, you don't. I am here. You can see some of my family members online. Ask them about me. They can even tell you that now some, most of them don't get me. Some of them still believe I am devil. Devil is using me and all that. But you that is listening to me, do you think devil is using me? And if you believe devil is using me, why is devil stronger than God? Why is devil stronger than Jesus? Why can't that God you claim to be with you? Okay, God is with you. If God is with you, let that God then change me. You say, no, don't worry, one day. One day is not a day in your calendar. There's no day like one day. There is, according to your calendar, seven days in a week. You start with Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So be specific. What is the day your God will change me? And where was your God before devil began to use me? Have you seen the devil? Have you seen God? No. Yet you keep embracing them. Religious belief is our major problem. If you can trust religion, as I did, and some Africans are still doing, you will see how better we believe in. It's after I trust religion, I begin to see every African, African as my brother or my sister. I begin to side my African brothers and sisters than any other race. Even though my own African brothers and sisters are wrong. I will never condemn them before any other race. I will side them. Then later we can talk about it. If I see you attacking my own fellow African, I will attack you. If I see you attacking other race, I'm not attacking you. You say why? Because we have suffered enough. They have suffered us enough. We don't supposed to defend them. They are the ones that are supposed to be defending us because we have suffered enough in their hands. It is time you wake up, Africa. You keep believing there is God. God is with you. Which God? Where is this God? This God is not with you anywhere. Look at your own life. Look at your own family. In your own family, can't you see how you guys are suffering? Okay, you don't want to learn. Learn from your phone, your cell phone, your smartphone. Your phone have ringing tone. Let's say you misplace your phone. You are looking for your phone. Right? 
Do you pray to God to show you where your phone is? What do you do? You ask somebody else that have phone, call my phone. That is the one of the wise first thing you will do. Call my phone. It will ring wherever it is. They call your phone. You ring. You find out where it is. Or you put it in vibration. You know how it's vibration. You know how it vibrates. So you begin to see. Because on vibration, you can hear. <clears throat> and so you begin to, you want to find your lost phone. How many of you will pray to God for, to, for you to get your, phone, your lost phone back? In Nigeria, you go to MTN office. I lost my phone. I need a new, another SIM. You know what you go through for you to get it. So if God is with you, why are you going to buy another phone? Why are you going to change your sin? God is supposed to show you where your phone is. God is supposed to help you to find what is lost in your life, in your family. Why is it another man telling you somebody is against you in your family? Somebody is after your business. Why can't God himself speak to you if God is with you? All you Christians, all you Muslims, all you Jews, all you religious people that believe God is with you, where is your God? If that God cannot put food on your table and the money in your pocket, that God is useless in reality. Think, us think, peace.